Well, if you will, take your Bibles and join me uh, in Mark tonight, Mark chapter 9. We're going to continue looking at a period in time in the life of Christ when he is seeking to teach his disciples humility. A lesson that um, they had a hard time learning. A lesson that many of us have a hard time learning as well. I want to just kind of remind you, if you'll join there, uh, look there in Mark 9, and we're going to pick up in verse 38. But just kind of remind you, last week we were looking at Matthew, Matthew's account. And uh, these kind of, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all are kind of giving us a different look at the same time period, the same interaction between Christ and his disciples. Matthew, a little fuller account on certain areas. Mark, a fuller account on certain areas. And then Luke just kind of, oh, yeah, and this, and this, and this. And, and he kind of echoes what the other two say at certain points, but nothing really uh, major, list, uh, major um, additions to what is going on. Um, but we've been looking... Last week we looked at where Jesus, uh, his disciples were arguing about who was the greatest in heaven. And Jesus took the child and he told them that they would not enter the kingdom of heaven if they were not, did not become like children. He was teaching them, again, humility. And we left Matthew last week in verse 6, Matthew 18 verse 6 where he says but whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to stumble it would be better to have him have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea now let's pick up in Mark as he said that as he made that statement whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble John realizes he's not talking about children, per se. He's using the child as an illustration. But he is talking about those who believe in him as the little ones. And he's saying, whoever causes one of these, one of these who become like a child and have faith in me to stumble. And this causes John some problems. This gets him to thinking And causes him to have a little uh, nervous reaction. So look there in Mark, Mark 9. I'm just going to read a couple verses out of Mark and, and, and share with you Luke's account of it too. Mark 9, 38. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able to soon afterward um, be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Verse 40, for he who is not against us is for us. And then he goes on uh, about giving a cup of water to drink in my name, and, and he talks about the little ones stumbling again, and he, later on he speaks, if, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. I'm sharing that with you just to let you know that in Matthew's account, he shares those same things. But he does not share this interaction between John and Christ. Luke does. Now Luke 9, 45 and 49 and 50 says this. You don't have to turn there. I'll read it to you. John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow along with us. But Jesus said to him, do not hinder him for he who is not against you is for you. Jesus has said, anyone that causes one of these little ones to, who believes in me to stumble, it's better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and thrown into the sea. And John's remembering an encounter. 
and he's beginning to think, brothers, we may have not done the right thing here. So I want to ask about it. He's going to ask Jesus. He's pretty sure he's right in what he's thinking, that they were wrong, <laughs> but he's going to ask. So notice his question, teacher, Luke says, master, we, you know what that word right there tells us, right? This is a group effort. John did not do this on his own. This is a group effort. But here's the unique thing. This is characteristic of John. This is in his nature. Remember, this is the individual who just in a few verses there in Mark, if you'll look down just a few verses there in Mark, or in, in, it's in Luke. Luke chapter 9, just a few verses later in verse 54, it says, when his disciples, James and John, saw this, and it, it's talking about the people in Samaria who would not allow Jesus to, they were not making arrangements for Jesus. When they saw this, they said, Lord, you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them. It's unique how John talks about himself in his gospel as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He wasn't always very loving. And that episode comes right after this conversation. This rebuke, really, of John. But John is telling Jesus, we. Now look what he says. Back in Mark, we saw someone. Casting out demons in your name. Uh, notice he does not say, we notice someone trying to cast out demons in your name. He does not say, this guy was attempting to cast out demons and wasn't able to. Now that's important, that, that's an interesting detail, because if you'll remember, not too long before this time, Remember Jesus had gone up on the mountain of transfiguration. They come back down and, and there's this whole crowd. And Jesus says, what are y'all discussing? And someone says, I brought my son to you and I, to cast the demon out of him. And you weren't here, so I asked your disciples to do it. And they could not. They weren't able to cast out a demon. But now John is saying, this man was casting out Demons. Evidently, this man is successful in casting out demons. But John gives us another clue here. He says, casting out demons in your name. This man wasn't, by my own power, I'm casting out this demon. This man was casting out demons in the name of Christ. Do you remember what we said was the problem with the disciples, why they could not cast out the demon from that, that child, that young boy? Because they were doing it in their own power. They were trying to do it apart from the power of Christ. So they couldn't. But this man, this man is successful at casting out these demons. John says, we saw this. We saw this. Think through this for a moment. We saw this man casting out demons in your name. And now look at that next statement that he makes. And we tried to prevent him. He's casting out demons in the name of Christ. And John says, so we tried to stop him. We tried to put a stop to this. I again want to point out the, the word because both Mark and Luke include the word we tried to stop him. If you try to do something that you're not necessarily successful, you tried it but it didn't work out. So here this man is casting out demons. The disciples try to stop him and evidently weren't able to, but they at least tried to. Notice his reasoning. Not because there was something wrong, not because he was doing it in his own power. The reason is just flat out jealousy. 
we tried to prevent him because he is not following us. He doesn't belong to our church. He's not in the same denomination we're in. <clears throat> Both Mark and Luke say, because he does not follow us. It's nothing more than jealousy among the disciples. We are the disciples. We belong to Christ. We are following you. You are teaching us. And here someone is stealing our thunder. And so we tried to stop him. There's a question John is asking here in this statement. Were we wrong? I just heard what you said about keeping those little children from coming. Did, did we do that? Did, did, did we make that mistake? Are we preventing someone from coming to you? And we're doing this because he does not follow us. So let's look at Jesus' reply. But Jesus said, do not hinder him. The answer to John's unasked question is, yes, you were wrong. You shouldn't have stopped him. Do not hinder him. In Mark's account, he says, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name. Do you see what Jesus is saying? This is genuine. He wasn't trying to cast out demons. He was casting out demons. Where did the power come from? Christ, right? Evidently, God is allowing this someone to cast out demons. There's no one who will be able to perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. You know what he's telling his disciples? This man is one of mine. He may not be in this group. He may not be of us right here in this circle. But he is one of mine. He is one of my disciples. He may not be in your church. He may not be in your denomination. He may not be in your little circle. But he is one of mine. Do not hinder him. Do you realize the mistake the disciples have made here? Go back in your memory as we've been following Christ. Matthew chapter 12, Jesus cast out a demon. That's when the people rejected him, remember? The people come to the Pharisees at that time, and they said, this can't be the Son of God, can it? And remember, I told you, their question it's not a question, is he the Son of God? The question is, will you verify what we believe to be true? We do not believe this is the Son of God. Will you verify that? And remember the response of the Pharisees. This man cast out demons by Beelzebub. And Jesus' response is basically, and I'm putting it in the MDM version here, that makes no sense at all. Why in the world would Satan possess an individual to cause havoc and then cast the demon out? Well, that makes no sense. Remember he said a house uh, divided against itself will not stand. He said that, that makes no sense for Satan to cast out Satan. His disciples evidently forgot that. Because here you have a man casting out demons. And Jesus is basically saying he can't be working for Satan. So that means he's working for me. Clearly the disciples had forgotten this lesson. It, it makes no sense for Satan to be casting out Satan. This man is casting out demons in Jesus' 
name. This man is not working against Jesus, and Jesus says, so he is for us. In verse 40 there in, in Mark's account, he says, he who is not against us is for us. In, in Luke's account, he says it just a little bit different. Do not hinder him, for he who is not against you is for you. I want to give you an application to this. As you drove to church tonight, chances are good you drove by other church buildings. You drove by other assemblies. We are not the only church in Mebane. We're not the only church in Alamance County or North Carolina. We're not in competition with one another. We are not, let me say this, agape should not have its own goal. Christ has given us a goal. Go and make disciples. Glorify the Lord. That, that should be what we're about. If our brothers and sisters in these other assemblies are doing that, they're not against us. They are with us. Now, I want you to notice, Jesus gives us an indication here how we know that they are with us and not against us. All you got to do is look at what the man is doing and what the man is saying. His words, he's casting out demons how? In Jesus' name. His goal is not to bring honor and glory to himself. His goal is to bring honor and glory to Christ. He's, he's casting out demons in Jesus' name. He's not saying, I'm doing this by my power. He's saying this is being done by the power of Christ. And so his words are to exalt Christ. His deeds are the work of Christ. Who else do we see casting out demons? Christ. So his words and his deeds match. If we have a, if there's another church in our area whose words and deeds match what Christ is doing, they're not against us. They're not enemies. In fact, even though we're meeting under separate roofs, sitting in separate pews with a different name, we are working together. Church is not a competition. I say that because here, here's, here's one of the things we need to understand. As we spread the gospel, if by God's grace we see a soul come to know Christ through salvation and they decide they're going to the church down the street whose words and deeds line up with Scripture, our response is what? Glory be to God. We do want them here. We'd love to have them to be a part of us. But if they're going to another church where, whose deeds and their words match the words and deeds of Christ, that's all that matters. It's to his honor and to his glory. And folks, another thing that happens in the church today is churches are stabbing one another in the back. Good churches that may differ on tertiary, secondary and tertiary issues, secondary and third level issues. The core issues are the same, but because they do not do some of the same things the same way we do, does not put them outside of Christ. When the core issues, when the, when the core message and the core deeds are the exact same, they're brothers and sisters in Christ, and we should be seeking to help them, not hurt them. We should be seeking to work with them, not work against them. God has put his people, thankfully, all over the place, and they are seeking to work and bring honor and glory to Christ. 
they are not our enemies. They are not working against us. We are, in fact, working together. So let me just encourage you. Let's be an encouragement to other brothers and sisters out there. When we see them working, when we see them preaching, their words and their deeds match. Let's be an encouragement to them, not a detriment. Let's have a word of prayer together. Our gracious Father, we again thank you for your word. Father, we often can be so much like the disciples. We have a we're number one mentality. We have a our own mentality too often. Father, help us to have a sensitive heart like John and at least seek correction. At least seek to be clear in what we're doing and whether or not it's right and seeking to do what is right. Lord, as we depart from this place and depart from one another this evening, again, we want to thank you for the opportunity to come and worship. It is such an encouragement, such a good time to be surrounded by brothers and sisters in the faith, be able to, uh, Father God, worship together, and as we've done uh, this morning, and we'll do again this evening, to fellowship with one another, just enjoy one another's company and being around one another. But Lord, we're leaving here, and we're going into the world tomorrow. Use us. Use us to do your works and use us to do, uh, to proclaim your word that you may be glorified through us. Use us to encourage a, a brother and sister that may be a part of another local body. Use us to help strengthen them and, and help them in their ministry. Send them to help us. Again, Father, we, we just our desire is to bring honor and glory to your name. Use us to do that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.